my lovely, lovely imps, today we are going to do something very special. I am going to take you on a journey to the lands of another creative person, a creative person who is incredibly, incredibly valuable to me, who has been a huge inspiration to me. That is to the lands of Hideo Kojima. Uh, recently, as in within the last couple of days, we were all gifted as the world uh, a trailer for Hideo Kojima's upcoming game, Death Stranding 2. And I need us to watch it together. And I'm going to explain a little bit why I feel that. And I hope that you'll ride with me. Because I promise you, it is a true experience. It is genuinely magical. Um, my first Kojima game was Death Stranding. I am a fi And a lot of people are going to go, what the fuck? You're such a big Kojima fan. It's shocking that that was your first Kojima game. But it was. Back in 2019, uh, I decided, after seeing the incredible trailers for Death Stranding 1 um, and, and feeling called by the vibes of the game, I was like, I'm going to finally do it. I'm going to embark on a Kojima, a Kojima journey, a Kojima journey, a Kojermy, a Kojourney, whatever. I decided I was going to embark on it, and I decided to play Death Stranding, and I fell in love with that game. Death Stranding is such an amazing game, and it's one of those games, it's one of the few games that I will defend like a brawler if I have to. Uh, there are a lot of people who have strong opinions about Death Stranding because it does a lot of things uh, different than other games. It, ha it makes a lot of very unique decisions and it's a game that has a lot of friction in certain ways um friction is a uh you know a gaming concept that refers to uh, uh that refers to aspects of a game that aren't necessarily easy or smooth uh that sometimes bother some players that can be uh that can in fact make some players bounce off a game entirely uh, they are, it is, it is things that are, they're dis design decisions that don't necessarily make for a streamlined or smooth experience, but that nonetheless, uh, add something to a game. And certainly Death Stranding is a game that has some friction. Uh, uh a lot of people complain about various aspects of Death Stranding and they can complain all they want. Uh, I treat complaints of that type about as you know about as much as i care about like a a yelp review at the dmv you know uh it's just like it doesn't matter at all you know like they're meaningless um i think that there are some genuine and strong c critiques that can be made for death stranding but death stranding is a game that i think goes places that a lot of other games do not i think it is a game that is uh uh, very interested in uh, it, it. It has a meta element to it, and not like a cheap meta element. It's a it's a game that is very interested in the nature of games. It is a game that is very interested in the nature of game design. Um, and of course, there's a lot more than that. It's a very very political game. Um, it's an incredibly emotional game. Uh, it is a game that uh, that that talks about isolation, loneliness the building of social connections, um, how social connections can be weaponized and abused, uh, how, uh, you know, how, how our best intentions, uh, can completely be taken out of our hands and, and, and thrown into a direction that we never could have predicted. It is, it is a very, very dense game with a lot of emotional stuff going on, but it also has a lot to say about games as a whole. It has a lot to say about how, we as humans relate to video games, how we relate to the act of playing, how we re how how the world has structured games and where they put them. And I find that uniquely valuable because most games don't do that. Most games 
uh, kind of want you to forget that you're playing a game outside of, you know, maybe a few fourth wall breaking jokes, but they don't really think about or or handle their own nature in the real world. And Death Stranding doesn't shy away from any of that. It very much wants you to uh, to think about this. It wants you to spend time going, what are games for? What am I supposed to be doing here? What am I supposed to be getting from this? And what can these things be used for? What 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 value do they provide for us? And how can we make them better? How can we take them to the next level? Can games become something more um, than just a toy? Can they become something more than just a tool? Are they already there? And as a result of all of these, I think that Death Stranding is, you know, is one of the most important games that we've ever seen. I I encourage people to go play it. Um, <laughs> some people love to call it a walking simulator. And you know what? They're fucking right. It is a walking simulator. No, it is the only actual walking simulator. Okay, besides Quop, but that's more of a running simulator. So, um, but really, no, I do believe that it is, uh, you know, People call it a walking simulator, but they don't actually understand what's really going on in Death Stranding. And a lot of this is just for me setting up for why this game is so important to me and why I care about it so much and why I'm so excited for Death Stranding 2. But uh, I really want to encourage people in my audience, if you haven't played Death Stranding, you should seriously consider it. Um, it is a game, in my opinion that if you take it seriously, if you bite into it and chew on it and think on it, will make you a smarter person and will also make you more literate about games generally. I mean, that's not the right word because obviously literate is literature. It'll make you more, uh, it'll, it'll level you up, okay? You'll be leveled up in your game knowledge. Should you play Death Stranding when you're stoned or would that be too intense? In my personal opinion, there are a lot of ways to enjoy Death Stranding. I quite enjoy, I quite enjoyed playing Death Stranding while enjoying numerous substances. Uh, uh, and in fact, uh, I have heard that uh, things like psychedelics uh, play very, very well with the game Death Stranding. However, I will also say there are parts of the game that are very intense. So, you know, take it at your own pace. Um... Uh, I thought about Quop the moment you said walking simulator. Get out of my head, mama. No, that's my job. My power is that I can exist within your head at all times. Never know when I'll be in there. In fact, right now, all across the world, there are people in which in their minds, a version of me is, is, is currently talking to them. It's incredible, isn't it? Not just you either. You all are watching a virtual version of me which means through your eyes, a vision, an actual version of me is dancing across your brain in real time. But also there are people thinking about me right now who aren't watching this stream going, wow, what did Demon Mama say there? Grr, I hate that Demon Mama. Ah, I love that Demon Mama. And of course, probably downstairs, there are people uh, going, God damn it, did Demon Mama bring her dish down? And the answer is no, I put my dish out there and I'll bring it down later. But... Uh, Death Stranding 1 was an amazing experience, and I didn't expect there to ever be a Death Stranding 2, but Death Stranding 2 was announced. Uh, it was announced last year, and this year we received, just a couple of days ago from the recording of this video, uh, a second trailer, and I want to watch it together because I think that even if you haven't played the first Death Stranding, Although its meaning and value will be enhanced, I think that you will discover a little bit of what all of us Death Stranding heads love about this game. So let me bring this up for us real quick and we'll watch this together. <laughs>
Welcome to Drawbridge, Sam. And to the G8V Magellan, our mobile base of operations. Come on, I'll help you get your bearings. This is the ship's armory. Here you can check your weapons and put them through their paces. Oh, beautiful. These rooms over here belong to other members of the crew. They're pretty much the same as yours. And the shower's down at the end. This is one hell of a ship you got here. Courtesy of the UCA, I'm guessing. No. As I told you, Drawbridge is a civilian outfit. But we do have a generous patron with access to plenty of capital and tech. Sounds like a UCA big shot. Don't ask me. We've never met face to face. They value their privacy. Seriously? No better than to believe that bullshit. It's the same deal as America. The people here are all spread out. Cut off from one another. We want you to help us bring the world together. <clears throat> Sam, would you mind if I join you? Humor him. Mm. His knowledge and experience will probably come in handy down the road. Yes. Really, Sam? Your buttocks? What about shotgun? I prefer the driver's seat. <laughs> Sam, do you read me? You'll first need to access the Mexico side plate gate terminal. After we've confirmed network coverage, we can take the DHV Magellan and regroup at your position. The problem is, not everybody wants to be part of the UCA. That's not the plan, Sam. The UCA isn't looking to expand its borders. Just like with Mexico, they want to bring new regions into the network. Anyway, the DHV Magellan's here to back you up. As always, you'll be the one leading the way to expand the network. What's your role in all this? You're the commander, huh? That's right. These days I'm fragile in name only. You brought America together. Helped it be reborn as the UCA. But I'm afraid the Death Stranding is far from over. Humanity is still in danger. Still on the brink of extinction. Don't act like you don't see it. A lot of things changed after you went off on your own. Especially within the UCA. Bridges no longer oversees the distribution network. They withdrew once things were up and running. So your friends and co-workers all went their separate ways. Within network coverage, there's no need to rely on human porters anymore. So after I closed up shop, I went and started a new group. One that handles work in regions outside the UCA. We decided to call ourselves Drawbridge. With the support of the Chiral Network and APAS, humanity will be free from the need to move around. Bots are capable of handling deliveries. He's alive. He called himself a ghost, but... He found a way back from the beach just so he could kill us. He said he came back to get revenge on you and me. Hey, brother. You miss me. Yeah, I figured you'd pay this place a visit, seeing as how I've been distributing the fruits of this fine factory all over the continent. Guns and violence, the whole damn world could be yours. Same as it ever was. Oh. Looks like you decided to trade in that rope for a stick this go round. Well, I suppose even a porter has to pull the trigger from time to time. Oh, what about you? Hey, buddy. Are you just another soulless little husk, huh? Let go of me! Oh. Pathetic guitarist, where's the rest of your band? No, uh, 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 uh. That's something. Was it you, Heads? Huh? Was it you that killed Lou? 
You still don't know, do you? what we can find on Lou. If he won't answer us, you're gonna have to find them yourself. But the ones you do find, well, that pain you nurse will only get worse. Sam the man in the dark about everything. Don't forget. Coming on this expedition was meant to help you find the strength to carry on. And you have. We all know you've got this. Now it's time to finish the journey, Sam. Please understand, Sam. We never meant to string you along. That chrysalis, we found her inside. It was filled with a fluid that contained amino acids. One's identical in structure to the kind found in tar. I'm sorry, there are amino acids in tar? As in proteins? Of course. How else did you think that chiral creatures could emerge from it? Some have even theorized that the tar is a sort of primordial soup. I was there, I saw her home. And it was a hellhole. See, after you left Bridges, I decided to do a little digging. Now, according to them, BB-28 was flagged for disposal and subsequently incinerated four years ago, long before you and Lou first met. intrigued should be there's a lot going on in the trailer of course the vibes immaculate the world dreamlike uh the wonders wonderful um i i noticed there's people in chat going i don't know what exactly is going on and you're not really supposed to know exactly what's going on uh I played, I've played Death Stranding 1 multiple times, and there's so much that is going on in these trailers. Uh, in this 10-minute in this trailer, um, that uh, there's no way you could know. But it's enticing. It's beyond enticing. And I think that's the reason why, I think the only reason why, you know, I, I tend to be fairly immune to hype these days. There's almost nothing I really get super hyped for, but... Kojima stuff always gets through to me, and that's because what he communicates with his trailer is the the vibe of the game and what and the messages and hints that are buried in there hint to uh, uh, exactly what you can expect from the game. Um, yeah, that was a ten minute. I know it, it. It passes like that because it's just it it sucks you in, you know. And uh, there's 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 like so many new characters. George George Miller plays the captain, which is incredible. Uh, of course, we have a whole bunch of new new characters that we haven't seen before. Some returning characters. The world seems to have changed quite a bit, um, which is part of the reason why you can't expect to understand everything that you see in the trailer. 
because you are entering into a world that has changed since the last time we were in it. Um, you know, we're not going back to Death Stranding 1. It's not Death Stranding 1.5. It's a totally new game that takes place, you know, seemingly, you know, a, a decent amount of time in the future. You know? The Mad Max director. Yes, the Mad Max director. Was the traded the rope for the stick line saying they're going to be more combat focused this time? Uh, as far as I can tell, yes. Uh, in this trailer, they not only show, they not only have the like trading in the rope for a uh, stick, but they also show an expanded armory that already has like twice as many weapons. Just in that one shot of the armory, you can see that there's about twice as many weapons as there were in the first game. Um, now, Death Stranding 1 is a game that, um, it has a lot of combat in it, but combat is not the central focus of the game. Um, it, but, and yet there's still a lot of combat in it. The combat is a bit um, atypical. And, it, and uh, you know, you're fighting a lot of otherworldly beings, um, and a lot of your combating of these otherworldly beings involves um, avoiding them uh, or deterring them in some way or another without outright killing them. Um, although, of course, as the game goes on, uh, you encounter enemies where um, you don't have much of a choice. And in fact, well... I should say, you don't have much of a choice but engaging with them in more traditional combat. However, the game significantly discourages you from ever killing a living person. Uh, in fact, there can be dire consequences for doing so. Um, because in the world of Death Stranding, um, you know, sort of part of the storyline is that humanity's relationship with death has fundamentally changed. You don't just die anymore. Um, if you die, uh, you enter a sort of new state of existence and your, and, and dead bodies are not just like, uh, a threat of disease or anything like that, but they are actually a threat in that, um, they can cause, uh, and like an, a, basically an antimatter like explosion if they come in contact with dead things or BTs, beached things. Um, so there's this whole new dynamic that's engaged with, with regard to death, hence, you know, the game being very centered around talking about how human humanity's relationship to death. Um, and so far in Death Stranding 1, I haven't killed anyone. Yes, it's very common for you to go the entire game without killing a single other person. Um, and in fact, the game kind of wants you to do that. It's hard. It's harder to do that. There are a large amount of lethal weapons in the game, but they're very dangerous to do for the aforementioned, affor aforementioned reason. If you kill someone, they could cause what's called a, a void out. And a void out will not only destroy a region of the map, but it will mean that you, when you go there the next time, it will be full of BTs instead of normal like instead of like guys who are shooting guns at you uh it will be full of undead things that that are really difficult to kill um yeah um yeah i i do believe there's all i have every reason to believe that there is a lot more combat on the way in a death stranding 2 i think the trailer is very clear about that in more ways than one um, but also I, and I also expect that to be a significant part of the narrative as well. Um, you know, in, in Death Stranding 1, um, the, uh, violence was a, a, a special type of taboo. Um, and the relationship, uh, that the sort of remaining, fragmented state had with violence had changed very extensively um and and it didn't present itself in the same way um you know because uh in in this world there's all kinds of technology that no longer works you don't have uh drones to drop bombs with you can't uh you know bombs are really dangerous because they kill a lot of people at once which can completely and utterly destroy what you need to survive uh instead um access to resources, um, access to uh, deliveries and things like that become a measure by which the existing state powers in that world uh, wield power. That's very central to the, the storyline of the first game.
Um, the Death Stranding 2 trailer, of course, I mean, and I, I, I've only just been talking about, I haven't even talked about the gay stuff yet. Can we be, can we just be real? Pigs off the chart, okay? What the, unbelievable. He's got gold, he's got gold tears running down his face, down to his gold lipstick. He's got a grave, uh, you know, a grave makeup on to, that makes him look like some kind of a Marilyn Manson cosplayer. Actually incredible. And the, 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 the visible guts in the container, the, the guitar, the guitar lightning weapon. Incredible. Unbelievable. What the, I, there is so much cool and inventive stuff going on in this game, and it vibes so well with everything else in it. One of the things I love the most about Death Stranding, and now, of course, Death Stranding 2, what we've been able to see so far of Death Stranding 2, is that it genuinely feels... Um, there is so much for us to latch onto, but it genuinely feels like you're stepping into like another world, like you're stepping into somebody's dream. It's a world uh, where the designs and the solutions that people come up fit that world. The things that people use, uh, even when out, out, you know, out there and wild, fit that world and fit those characters. You know, um, the character that we saw, Higgs, who had the gold, you know, the gold things dripping down his face and the gold lipstick, the Joker guy. Um, Higgs is like, he's kind of like a god among men. You know, not not to, you know, I mean, he kind of reveals that right away in the first game. But he has, like, godlike powers. He has the ability to summon undead beings from out of thin air. Gigantic ones, the likes of which no one has ever seen. He doesn't need a gun to do anything. He, he, he can flex on you by trying to fight you with a guitar, a lightning guitar axe. You know? Incredible. It's amazing, and it's beautiful, and I like, I love the fact that Death Stranding is, it, it's, it's a universe that is very in touch with itself. They, and, and people say, oh my god, it's so out there and wild and stuff, but it's like, it actually, all this stuff pretty fits pretty goddamn well in the universe they've created. For example, like, um, one of the things in Death Stranding 1, uh, it, you know, that you kind of learn about is that, like, Death Stranding 1 takes place in in a sort of obviously an alternate future but an alternate future where humanity invested like like humanity focused on elect on like electric technology instead of oil technology and in fact i have a feeling that that's going to be a fairly big part of death stranding 2's storyline uh they keep talking about the tar and the tar in the first game was likely I mean, it, they call it tar, but it's oil. It's petroleum. You know, it's crude. Um, and it's just like when they encounter it, they're just like, what the fuck am I? What are we supposed to do with this shit? Um, which is interesting to think about, given our real world relationship with oil. And yes, of course, the black gold, which are two colors that th this tar-like substance is always present with the, the, the gold chiralium. Um... I love the co-op aspect of Death Stranding. It's genuinely magical. That's why I have this. If you listen, I have the the Death Stranding like noise as my little soundboard like button. It was one of my favorite features of the game. It 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 it, it proved its own concept. The idea in Death Stranding was that um, that the the knowledge of helping other players. Um, uh, alone would motivate people to uh, go out of their way to do things that they otherwise wouldn't do in the hopes that they'd be helping other players and as a result it would end up helping everyone and it proved that that game proved it likes are literally have no monetary value whatsoever you can't spend likes on anything you can accumulate them and it looks really cool when you have a ton of likes from other players uh, you can give away as many likes as you want you can get as many likes as you want uh, but you only get them if you engage with the rest of the world, if you engage with the rest of the players. And you're going to get a lot of likes if you do a lot of stuff for other players. And people, like, the main flex 
in Death Stranding is how much you've helped other players. If you get a ton of likes, it's because you've done a ton of stuff to help other players and they've decided to take their time pressing the button like this. Which is interesting, you know? By the way, if you're here and you haven't liked the video, you should like my video. Because I'm doing something nice for you and keeping you entertained. First of First says, it's a very isolating game. Basically, everyone you meet is a hologram. It's actually a musing on how to overcome isolation. It is a very isolating game. You rarely meet other people in person. In fact, almost no one ever gets to meet anyone else in person because it's too dangerous to do so. Which is amazing also considering that this game came out in 2019 before the pandemic, an event that made it very difficult to go see other people and to uh, live a normal social life. And people have had to learn how to connect with each other, even though it has been and still is somewhat dangerous uh, to engage with other people in a, in a, for, in a traditional social manner. It is... Uh, that aspect of it is so deep. I could spend an entire day talking about the the game's uh, sort of opinion and approach towards discussing loneliness, towards discussing social bonds. There is so much that I want to show. I want to play the game and talk about all of it on stream sometime. But there's a particular moment that I want to talk about. And this is a small spoiler, okay? Um, but I feel like it's important to give you guys part of the reason why I'm so excited about Death Stranding and Death Stranding 2. In Death Stranding 1, one of the first people that you meet in the game is a guy named George, okay? Um, and uh, he lives in a fairly remote bunker, uh, pretty far away from the, the like main city that you start the game in, okay? You get a couple of missions to deliver things for him, and when you first start delivering for him, you find out that um, basically uh, he hasn't seen anybody, like he barely sees anybody outside of the people he lives with because he lives with a couple of other people, his family and whatever. Um, but he basically has not left, uh, that he's been isolated in this bunker, mu much like many of the other characters in the game for uh, the, for the, since the Death Stranding occurred, which has been a long time. He doesn't see many other people. And also that he deeply fears going outside. Um, not for any irrational reason. He's not like a, you know, he doesn't have like a phobia or anything like that. Um, he's just terrified. Because in addition to there being BTs, which are the undead things that can just kill you and make you blow up and kill other people, um, there are also uh, uh, mules that uh, which are like these sort of they're people who've kind of lost their minds and they've gotten a thing called drone syndrome, which is basically where someone uh, uh, someone loses their minds to whatever work they do. In this game, it's delivering packages. They lose their mind to whatever work they're doing and they just do it without any reason. They don't even deliver the packages anywhere. They just take packages and deliver and take them to random repositories. They have these boxes they just pile packages up in because they're just going through the motions of the job that they used to do. And um, and as you deliver packages, if you, if you decide to pursue George's storyline, which all of the characters in the game, you don't have to complete their storyline. You can just deliver the minimum necessary packages. But if you choose to, he continues to send you emails. And uh, one of the one of the most like sort of moving ones is that he decides to leave his bunker after you've done stuff. Basically, he's like, you've delivered me so much. You've delivered life-saving medicine for my family. And I feel like I want to be brave enough to go outside like you do. You would brave incredible danger. And I know I'm not ever going to be, because he obviously doesn't have the powers that you have. As, the, as Sam Porter Bridges, you're given unique powers. But he decides to step outside and you you actually get emails from him as he goes on this journey of overcoming his fear going outside and ultimately discovering your footprints and literally he chooses to step in your footprints like quite literally he, he's like i found your footprints and i decided to step in them myself because if i can step in your footprints then i know that i can do something like what you did what you've done for me i can do and he follows your footprints to, to, to go outside. It's an absolutely amazing moment. And I, I, I genuinely think you should go experience the 
full story, not the my retelling of it for yourself. Um, but that was one of the moments in the game where I knew I was sold and I was going to play the entire thing to the end to an incredible amount of um, of of uh, completion. The, the 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 way in which this game portrays relationships, re portrays people's ability to work together, to communicate to one another. Also, uh, something that should be noted is that Sam is actually physically, well, or at least it seems to be. He At the beginning of the game, Sam is physically allergic to human touch. When humans touch him, it burns him and he gets a mark. And when you first meet Sam, he has burn marks from people having touched him all over his life, all over his body. And that's a big part of the game, is that um, Sam himself struggles with connection. And that it is through his actions and, and his choosing to engage with other people that he's able to overcome his own fear, that he's able to, you know, figure out how to live with these sorts of things. It's, a, it's an amazing game. And uh, the George storyline is like one of the first ones that a lot of people miss. You know, sometimes they're just gunning through the game and they don't decide to do George's whole storyline. Um, but, but it's really awesome. And you should do it when you play for yourself and you'll see what I'm talking about. It's not even the only one. That's one of like, there's like 18 characters that have full storylines that you can unlock and do. And they're amazing. And they're incredible. And all of them are different. All of these characters have differing opinions on politics. They have differing views on the world. And you spend time helping them meet their needs and they help you. One of the coolest things about the game is that almost every character has something completely unique that they can give you. They have a tool or an insight or a secret that if you complete their storyline, they will give you something that only they could ever provide in the same way that you gave them something that only you could ever provide. Magical game. And this is part of the reason why I'm so excited for Death Stranding 2. Because I think it's also going to be magical. I think it's going to be incredible. Yeah. Um, the multiplayer aspect uh, is a reflection of the themes of the game. And it's beautiful. It's the first strand type game. And boy, did they nail it. I'm extremely, extremely... Um, excited to see where they go with Death Stranding 2 and how they decide to change things, how they're going to keep the social aspect uh, or change it, in fact. I imagine there's probably going to be changes. The, um, the sort of tagline for Death Stranding 2 um, is, should we have connected? Um, the first game is very much about connecting people uh, it is very much about convincing people to reconnect, to overcome incredibly difficult and real boundaries in order to connect. And towards the end of the game, uh, you encounter a whole bunch of complications from those connections. I won't get into the details because that would be huge spoiler territory. But connecting people, as it turns out, is more complicated than it seems. Um, and the second one is, should we have connected? That is sort of the, the tagline of the first trailer. And it's also mentioned in the second one, I believe. All if it actually, it was one of the, it was the tagline of the first trailer. And I think that that's going to be, uh, I'm interested to see how they decide to change the multiplayer aspects with that in mind. Uh, I have some, I have some theories about where they're going to go with the storyline because, um, one of the main things that is discussed throughout the game um, is the sort of the nature of civilization and the state and society, how these things operate. And it's a pretty, it has some, uh, look, I'll just say it's, 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 it, 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 it tickled the part of my brain that is very politically active, okay? I, uh, uh, I found myself thinking about a lot uh um you know there's 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 a lot to be said about a game in which you know your first your 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 first experiences in the game are basically being told that you have essentially no choice but to help your family who doesn't even barely know anything about you uh your family who also happens to be the governing family of the only existing society that you know 
They, they, they immediately put you in handcuffs, handcuffs that they tell you are supposed to be helping you, handcuffs which allow you to do your job, but also mean that you're, compl you're literally cuffed to the bed. You can't leave. Um, and yet you need them to survive. Without the cuffs, you can't do, you can't use any of the technology that you need to survive. Um, yeah, they've got some things to say about society. They've got some things to say about government. They've got th some things to say about, uh, the coercive nature of the world that we live in. And, uh, I'm excited to see where they go with Death Stranding too. Um, and, you know, it's going to be gay as fuck. Can we be honest? It's going to be gay as fuck. We got Higgs. We got Sam back. We got a little... Oops, it's playing the trailer again. <coughs> Whoop, it's start playing the trailer again. I pressed space by accident. Um, we got a little puppet man. We got... Uh, uh, we got... Uh, uh, we got Fragile back. We got... I wonder... I, I don't know who else we're going to see. I think it's going to be gay as fuck. It's going to be... And, and of course, we already know there's a shower. So, what's it gonna be? It's gonna be clean boys getting dirty and dirty boys getting clean. A forever Kojima theme. A forever Kojima th theme. When, what, you know, ever since what? Metal Gear Solid 5, it's been get your boy dirty, get your boy clean. They, they took time out of that incredibly cinematic trailer to tell you, there's your shower, Sam. You can go wash up over there. They literally, one of the opening things is washing the oil off of a lady's arm. You telling me it's not going to be getting clean and dirty all over again? I'm here for it, okay? Listen, the shower is a very important part of Death Stranding 1, all right? I know it's going to be a, an important part of Death Stranding 2. Maybe different, but another one. I love the shower mechanic, and I love all of the scenes that can happen in the shower. If you want to know what I'm talking about, and let me tell you, it's pretty intense. Pretty amazing. Some, uh, gets a little steamy in there. Might get a little steamy in the shower with a famous director. Don't know. Maybe, just maybe you'll have to go play Darth Death Stranding 1. You'll have to play really far in the Death Stranding 1. Uh, I am, I am so ready for it. And, uh, this is one of the few, if, if any games that I allow myself to actually get hyped for. And that's because, um, I, I have quite literally never been disappointed by Kojima. Uh, and I think that Kojima is working magic right now. I really do. I really do think that he's working magic. Um. And I can't wait for more of it. I had a dream about Death Stranding 2 after I watched the first trailer. Okay? The first trailer, I watched it, and I and it has been lodged in my dreams. Okay? I had a full-on, all-night, continuous storyline dream about Death Stranding after I saw the first Death Stranding 2 trailer. That's how much this, this game's visuals and story and world has embedded itself in my brain wild okay so <sighs> anyway um we all know Demon Mama can handle a package. You fucking know I can fucking handle that package. Not only that, but I'll get five-star S++ delivery. Legend of legend of legends. That's how well I can handle a package. Fucking you goddamn know it! It's insane how many stars I've gotten in all of my playthroughs cumulatively. Ridiculous, okay? It's stupid spent so much time delivering video game packages. Anyway, um, I want to, um, I want to play Death Stranding on stream at some point, for real. Actually do a full playthrough. 
but uh, we got to get through Dark Souls and stuff. So, yeah. Anyway, there is the extended Longo uh, discussion of Death Stranding and Death Stranding 2. There is so much to talk about. I would love to do like a long form discussion of Death Stranding on stream to go through all the lore and all that and discuss everything that it's talking about. But that'll be for another time. If you've enjoyed this, and you're interested in hearing me. I talk about Kojima games and many other games all the time. Make sure that you press subscribe and like down below. I would love to have you in my community. I am, after all, the first demon type streamer. And that was obviously very inspired by Kojima and his first ever strand type game. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for hearing this.